Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Welcome to the inaugural uh, Graph Builders Office Hours. Um, yeah. Um, this was planned uh, for for a while, but now finally we are able to actually uh, pull it in. So cool. Thanks all for joining. Um, yeah, I think the idea is really to have a um, not very formal place every week where we can talk about uh, builders stuff. We will invite speakers for the first uh, 30 minutes. Um, sometimes it looks like probably uh, th th we have a lot of to talk about, so that, that will be the, the thing. But what's also very important to me is that we have like open discussions in the last 30 minutes where like everybody can come up with questions. Um, about all different things that uh, are in the graph stack. So that could be about substreams, powered subgraphs, subgraphs, graph client, um, and that stuff. I indexer uh, questions and delegator, and for them, they have, we have a separate um, office hours. So these are just for, like, it's focused on people that are building on top of graph stack. Um, yes. So um, I think without further ado, we can jump into the Hackathon Starter Kit. Uh, the, 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 I played a little bit around on the side. Um, to give you some background context about the Hackathon Starter Kit is that uh, I actually used it to have like my own toolkit that has like a kind of front to back implementation of what's going on with the graph. So it's about, uh, uh, it's a local hard hat node that connects to a local graph node, or like a local graph node that connects to the local hardhat node, plus the front end um, empowered by graph client that then connects to this local node. So I use it to for troubleshooting or also to test out some features, test out latest graph node versions and that kind of stuff. But I will quickly um, show you how that goes and um, so that you might be, be able to follow along. So let me quickly share my screen. Share the whole screen. Uh, okay, let's close everything that's confidential. <laughs> okay, cool. And let's do this. Do you see my screen? All right, amazing. So to get started with, here is the Hackathon Star Kit on GitHub. I quickly post that link to you. And so the idea is really that it's a template uh, we can clone and start from here or like use the template. And there's also um, the documentation. I think I, I had to fix it today a little bit. So see, I have like new stuff. So basically what it is, we need to have Docker installed. You see that I have it here on the top Docker. And so it's, it's this minimalistic boilerplate. Eventually we will move that over hopefully into um, scaffold Eve. 2.0 uh, plugin, but that's in the mate king. So until now, we can work with this. Um, so we have we need to have pnpm. It's the new kid kid of the block in the package manager um, ecosystem for Node and uh, front end stuff, and then Docker to run everything locally. And that should be it. So um, both installation instructions are linked here. Um, so we're using uh, PMPM workspaces, it, it's it's cool thing. We can dive into this, uh, what this enables later. Hardhat and TypeScript project and um, subgraph generation with Hardhat graph. Although, like this morning, I had to uh, f kind of comment this out for 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 now because um, there's like dependency issues. Um, yeah, and then we have like this soup, this fully local development, and uh, with a graph not connect to it. All right, so we can close the repo in solid dependencies. That's what I did already. And then we can just go into the terminal. So I'm here uh, in my terminal and I can say uh, just pnpm dev. So that's the first command. What happens uh, in the background, it's, it spins up a Docker compose file with a local hard hat node, um, with a local graph node that consists of a Postgres database, uh, a graph node by itself, and an IPFS node that connects to the local hard hat node. And we see that all is already kind of spinning up. So that's, that's some good news so far, it works. And so also we see like the graph node is pulling the hard hat node like for, for new blocks. That's what it does. 
Um, so when, we, when, when, when you run this on your computer and you see this uh, information here, that, that kind of means everything worked. If that does not work, um, like then there will be some errors here. Uh, watch out for the a, like E-R-R-O uh, things. But um, yeah, if you have any errors, please go here and create an issue so that I can update this. But this seemed to work. So let's cr create a new terminal and just do pnpm quick start. These instructions are just also written here. So I can run pnpm quick start. And what it does now, it deploys a super simple NFT contract to the local hardware node and automatically creates a subgraph for it and uh, deploys that subgraph to the local hardware node. So that's what we see here. Um, so he, he, here uh, it will be deployed. So this is the contract address. Then it creates the subgraph um, and creates it and blah, blah, deploys the subgraph. And then we, we end up with this URL where we can see the subgraph. So let's quickly check this. Oops. All right. So this is the GraphQL interface exposed by the, gra by the local graph node. It's um, pretty similar to what we see on the subgraph studio. But the explorer is here on the left. And so it's a little bit different, but um, thanks to the guild who implemented this, this thing here. Um, like, because it's a standard subgraph that just indexes uh, the e events, we, we have like for each event that the NFT usually emits one uh, entity here. So we can look into the transfers and check for uh, everything that we have here and send that query and boom, we already have it, nice. So there is some command line stuff going on also um, that, we could, that we could dive into, but let, let, let me finish qu quickly the, the quick start. So the, so the next function is uh, to just run the front end. We can hook the front end onto, like it's a Next.js front end, we can hook that front end on top of um, the local hardhat node. And so we need to run this command also in the terminal. And so you see like there's just the next dev and uh, connects to localhost 3000. I use Firefox for my local development um, because I have here like one MetaMask instance that does not uh, have any actual value. And and now, like, it's a super stupid front end that just uh, displays the, the last transactions. And so you see, like, I already have like, connected my, my MetaMask to, to localhost. Um, and so I can just unlock it quickly. And then, um, yeah, I have the one account imported here. And then I can mint. and send the transaction, and it should up, oh, failed. Why it, did it fail? <laughs> uh, so I was sure like there will be problem. Ah, none's too high. Okay. So this error is because uh, I, I played around with this and MetaMask sometimes is not able to check that, um, that, uh, that because it's, 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 a, it's a freshly created uh, instance, I would say the nonce was set to... Um, yeah, the nonce was set to one, but I think that the first nonce should be zero because it's the first transaction that is made through that account. Um, let's try again. Uh, is it? Ah, no, it worked. Okay, cool. So we see we have now NFT minted um, to this address, which is myself. Nice. Okay, cool. So there was a lot of that, that, that looks like a lot of magic. So, so let's walk through the, some of the steps that I did in order to, to get here. Um, so one was to connect the local node. In, in MetaMask, we can create uh, here with settings, we can we can go to networks and we can create a new network 
with ad network or or let's or uh, or look into this so in order to connect to the local hard hat node you need to create an, a network that is called uh whatever we can actually <laughs> name it whatever we want but the important thing is the rpc url goes here so the the hard hat exposes the rpc and the chain id is this one cool so um that's that's why that worked then i think I also need to enable the nonce, yeah, the customized transaction nonce. So that was that 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 shows up this 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 field that that I had before um, to override the nonce. Um, and then the last trick is to import an account. So I have like my test accounts, but I have like these imported accounts here. So you see, these are they are very ETH heavy. And where did I get those from? When I Im usually start here, um, hardhat, uh, it creates accounts for me. So I have account zero, account one, account two, and, account, and so on. So I can just probably get, get this account two. I get that private key, and then I can do import account, private key, import. Oh, I already imported this, so I can go to the next one, import. And boom, I have a new account. So this is my way of really setting up like an independent local development environment, um, connecting MetaMask to it, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So I think so far this is clear. Any questions until now? No. Feel free to drop in any questions into the chat. If something is not clear, I can go into each of the topics uh, more deeply. I see Derek is chatting. <laughs> I'll. I'll mint more NFTs. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see. Cool. So now we have the local, we have everything running. Let's go a little bit into the code. So this project is just a, uh, like a, a standard like npm project. So on, on the root we have some uh, package JSON with some pre predefined scripts. That's the one that I used. I used dev and then quick start. There's also the clean command that uh, drops all uh, the volumes and, and so restarts from scratch. So that's that's good if if you want to start again. And then we have the quick start. Uh, yeah, the contract deploy, subgraph create, and front end dev. So these are some commands that we have here. Then also the readme. But we, but really, let's start with uh, contracts. Yeah. Okay. The question from Pranav is: Yes, the scaffold if implementation with the graph, which is in a branch for for scaffold if 1.0, the graph is in the standard thing. In the scaffold if 2.0, uh, the, uh, I created this branch, which more or less was uh, informed by the hackathon starter kit. Um, yeah, but I think what's not in the scaffold if 2.0 branch was the graph client, and I also wanted to show a little bit about the graph client in this session. So that's why I'm doing with the hackathon starter kit. But eventually we'll we'll have like a the, a very good and well done uh, plugin for scaffold if 2.0 with all the features from the graph, and from then on uh, I will probably abandon my hackathon starter kit. Cool. Um, yes. So what do we look at? So in contracts. Uh, it's just like a hard hat thing, standard hard hat. Um, what's, what's special is we have this. Uh, actually, it's nothing special. So no, this this is special. So this is enabled by pnpm. So we can import the subgraph, but I'll show you later on. The contracts are very simple. It's just like ESC 720 standards. And then what I do is just to say like, hey, yeah, we can mint. Everybody can mint. That's it. So it's 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 not it's not some very complex, and then um, maybe you can look quickly into the tasks. So there is a deploy task. Um, so far, it's very standard, but I, what what I did here is uh, I get so basically there is the hard hat graph plugin, but like that that has a dependency problem. Um, so I just rebuild what's in, most important from there. Uh, so there is this networks JSON in the subgraph, 
So this is a new standard in subgraphs that exists for a while that we have like for each network that we have kind of network traits for each network we have a address we can also define a spark start block here and this does nothing else than just gets that file and overrides the local host with the recently deployed address so that even if you redeploy the contracts um, the subgraph will always uh, point to the latest deployment so we can actually simulate that quickly so we can do um, pnpm quick start again. And note here in the subgraph, uh, especially here, this address. So currently it's 0x5bd. So if I, if I do this, quickly check if there are any. See, and now it goes to 0x9fe. Subgraph is recreated and redeployed. And so for one, the, fr the front end, like, like now it's, it's, it's a new deployment. So like the, the NFT that I minted just is not, is not here anymore. But we also see here that the subgraph actually was updated by the script. Or like the deploy script updates this and then creates a new subgraph. So that, so that it makes it really easy also to iterate. So one of the ideas of how I think like it would be the best development for full stack Steps is to, to develop the subgraph and the smart contract in parallel and have an easy way to just iterate on it and iterate on it. So on that one step in the direction of making this as easy as possible. So that's all what happens here. I also created some helper functions of it that we can mint from the command line of fun stuff like the npm mint. I think it's this one. So it just uh, mints that NFT and then we immediately see it here. So I just minted one for myself. And yeah, and the fund is to send, uh, we can also send some ETH around and get the balance off. So there's some helper function. But I think that's basically it for the contracts. Now let's look at the subgraph. Uh, in the subgraph, we have a package JSON. And what's special uh, is this deploy local. Um, although that deploy local exists, but what I also added is kind of this version label here. So what it does is it just generates for the git commit we are currently in a new version label um, so that we do not need to specify that version label uh, when we deploy. And uh, other than that, it, this is really the standard subgraph that's created with when we do index events. Um, so we have the subgraph, sources, and the schema, really the standard. Um, yeah, and then maybe we go a little bit into the front end in the last uh, couple of minutes. So the front end is just like a next app, but we also have the graph client in there. Um, and when we look at the graph client, there's always this graph client RC, and I played around with the features that I think are the most interesting for graph client. So first one is the block tracking. So first one is we need to define where, the, where, this, where is the endpoint. That's more or less standard. But like one of the plug plugins is um, the block tracking. So block tracking sends like rewrites each request. Probably see them here. In a way that it not only gets the the transfers but also the block. Let's see, so I can see this here. Yeah, here. It adds the block number into the request and then makes sure that like the next um, re request is always kind of getting this uh, with, the, with the GTE, where is it? Yeah, number GTE. So that's the, that's the, the best practice, how to query the graph that with each request, we always say like, okay, I want to have like results that are fresher than this. So this doesn't does uh, avoid this block block wobbling where, where it could be that one index is a little bit behind than before. So that's something that Graph Client just does for us, and that's simply enabled by this one. Then we have the live, um, or, or like I can also have the documents. So like I think that's very best practice of having a folder structure, of having a separate folder with queries with Graph Client. That's pretty easy. So we define the queries here, and then just say like. 
queries we find here in queries, uh, everything that's .graphql. So I can go to transfers and also here we see like the add live uh, decorator. And that tells the graph client that the graph client st starts to pull in the background for us. So that's why we had this magical thing of updating here that's enabled by the live queries. And then also account, um, although these are, these are, is another, is another feature. Mm. Cool. And then we have additional type definitions. That's just extending uh, the, the actual uh, uh, schema. So, so here, the idea is to have like uh, a GraphQL schema from the graph client uh, that has a little bit that knows more about uh, about Ethereum and an account. Um, so I can show this. Um, the best way to show this is in, when we go to pages. So here in index, um, we get the account, and the account comes through the uh, account query. And um, and also the account query that we, that I had here, it, it sends this underlying Ethereum account GraphQL query, which is not something that the graph by itself ha would support because it's actually something that happens only client side only. But the, since the graph client lives on the client side, that actually works. So that, that's kind of the idea of having GraphQL as a real data layer in in the front end. Um, that uh, yeah, that we can that we can en enhance with whatever we want. So when we look at the type depths, one thing that that we have here is like we have a connect mutation and also a mint mutation. And um, when we go back to the graph client, uh, that's all that's all defined in the additional resolvers. So when we go to resolvers index, then, then here this is traditional GraphQL. Um, thing that, that we, we can write resolvers for each of the fields. So the account goes here, it, try, it, it goes into ethers, tries to get the account out and then returns it back, or even also the connect tries to go into ethers and then uh, get a provider and request accounts and then connects to it. So in the front end, we see here there is no import of um, no import of uh, anything walk me or any other thing it's just graphql um this has uh pros and cons obviously but uh, that's that's the, the thing that i wanted to try out here um yeah i think uh, that's it for the graph client or the hackathon starter kit are there any questions about this <laughs> yeah okay I, I i return that question to to you actually uh if there is a firehose implementation for the hard hat node that would be possible but i don't know how hard this is to do it cool <laughs> um yeah, we still have time for, for questions. We can now also dive into other questions, like if there are any other subcraft development specific uh, or substreams development uh, specific questions. Um, now is the time.
All right. I see there's, there are no, no more questions, so I suggest we do something crazy. And that is we start to explore the new features that uh, are shipped to the graph node recently. The work of mutation. Okay, I okay, I can go into the mutations again. Let me quickly see uh, screens. Okay, all right. GraphQL mutations. Um, so yeah, okay. I can I can show this quickly. So there is one possibility here uh, to to also run the graph client in a development mode. NPM graph client serve. Okay. So what, what's happened here is like the graph client. Cre oh, shit. <laughs> okay. The, uh, Yeah, I don't know why this doesn't work. Okay, let let, let me explain. Um, the, 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 the mutations anyways. So mutations, so in GraphQL, basically what we have is, um, is, is query and mutations. So, so that's that's the basic. So since since um since the since the graph by itself does not allow writing yet, there were, there were plans to do this like long ago, but uh, it it you can, we can you can imagine it's quite quite tricky. Um, the a subgraph only offers queries, but in GraphQL in general there is a possibility to have mutations. And so how mutations work? Um. So, in the in the end, it is a, a mutation looks very very similar uh, to a query. It's it's also it's just like here it says it's mutation and uh, here it says query. So it's it's actually very similar. Um, and and to send a mutation, it just says, hey, if we send this operation, it will change something. Um, so when we when we when we work on a on a schema that we have here, uh, the, the top level ones are usually query and mutation. So since the mutation type doesn't exist in a subgraph, this is defined directly. And since the query already uh, exists, we can we can extend it by extend we add we say we add a new field to it. Um, now if the mutation the one that we saw here, so there's just like this mint mutation. So let's see how this is then executed in the front end. There is this mint mutation. So we can have like use mutation that comes from, from Yurkel, like as use query. And that, and that, that gives us back like basically one mint function and then the result. And then the mint function is just um, triggered when I run do mint, and do mint was the one was the thing that is built. Uh, it's bound to that um, button here. Now, when mint is called without any arguments, we could also give some arguments over. Then what happens is that is called that goes to, that actually runs this mutation that's defined here through graph client and then it goes to the uh, additional resolvers here it will find in mutation uh, top level field the mint mutation and then it runs this and in here this is a traditional uh, it instantiates uh, the, the contract and uh, gets the signer which I stored here in a, in a public thing and then I just run it so, so the beauty about mutations is that we can abstract away a lot of logic in, from the front end into GraphQL um, so-called resolvers that gives less of a hassle about trying to 
work with this async nature of like, oh, and is, is the mutation going on right now or not or whatever. Um, it just abstracts away a lot of functionality into GraphQL. Um, eventually, let's see. Uh, there was always a plan to have mutations kind of a little bit more natively supported by the graph. Uh, I think there's not currently someone actually working on this. But with Graph Client, we can already now start to try out and eventually maybe we come up with patterns of how we want to have uh, mutations then inside of the graph. Um, does this answer the question, Pranav? Thank you. All right. Okay. So now I get nervous because here is where stuff can go wrong. As this already went wrong, actually, maybe I, I create this. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Could create here an issue, so I remember. Running. Graph command search. Okay. All right. Uh, so in the Docker Compose file here, we see there is a graph node version defined. So currently that was uh, pointed to 0 0.29.0. 0. But in the meantime, protocol node, uh, a new graph node was released, I think. Check, yeah. So we have a new graph node version. So let's see what happens if we just upgrade here. Um, in order to do this, I need to st stop graph node. All right, that seemed to work. And then let's do just uh, uh, PNPM dev again. So I saved this one. So now the whole thing should come up with um, the latest graph node version. So let's see if that works. I already see one problem that might become that, that we might run into, but it's good to, to see that problem actually together. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Nice. Okay, so thread panicked with blah, 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 because something went wrong. And then we go a little bit up and then see critical database C uses C locale. Please check graph not documentation. Now we can set the database locale, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So that was uh, in one of these releases in between that they create, that they say like that the locale needs to be set to C. Mm, it was a breaking change, I think, here, yeah. And yeah, and we find how this is done. And we'll go into graph node, docker, docker compose. Um, Postgres, I think exactly. This Postgres init DB arcs. All right, like this. So we stop. And I would say now what we really want to do is um, use that clean command that we looked at before. So Docker Compose, that actually removes all the volumes. 
and um yeah and and so we can we can really start fresh when we when we run this pm pm def again let's see if that works Okay, cool. That made the trick. Nice. Um, cool. And then, so the next thing would be like a quick start again. Okay, so what for? <laughs> now I think like, okay, full text search now can be combined with ver filtering. Let's try this out. So in order to have full text search enabled, we need to do that in the schema. Full text. Uh, something like this. You want to write here about okay, name okay, entity. Believe it's stupid. So let's search on the entity and just on the transaction hash. Let's see if that works. Ooh. Okay. It didn't like this, so... Okay, it doesn't like this. So I need, yeah, I need to define it as a, as a fee, I think as features, experimental features. Uh, full text search that needs to go into the subgraph YAML. Let's try again. Hmm. Oh, 
Does someone know what, uh, how I can fix this one? Bootleg search is not yet deterministic. No. Interesting. Maybe we just remove the full text search feature. This this one. Yeah. Yeah, but well then I can okay, we can look we can look in other features. Um all right. Um I think the one of the other features that landed newly was the and or filters, if I remember correctly. Um Let's see, that was in, if that was in uh, 0 0.30, yeah, on door filters. Cool, okay, so we can check uh, in the, like, how they work. We can put it here, I think it's in querying. GraphQL API here. Okay, nested sorting we can try. No, we can't. Yeah, or so this this would be the, the way how to filter. So in our setup, what we do what we do quickly. Um create two and we mint from two different addresses okay cool okay account nine non zero let's see if that goes through No. Um, None's too high. Okay. Try again. Okay, cool. So we have now here two mints. One goes to this address and one goes to the other address. Now, I mean, it's maybe not the, the very best use case. So uh, for, for next time, we, we might want to prepare a little bit better. But basically, we can go here and do where. And he, here, I have to say, I think it, it changes a bit in. Yeah. Uh, right, it's where and then I think we need to refresh so it loads the latest schema. Yeah, here we go. Here, where or and then it's tricky because it it, it goes with um with these arrays which is not fully supported in um 
we can go we can go or two yeah, need to check. Fine. Does that look good? It's a where or and then an array and then two. Where is okay? Let's see. Yes. Okay. So these are the or queries. You can also do the and or let's say. And so we want to see, we just want to see mints. So from is zero and two days. And so that, for example, this would be a query that only, uh, that only gets mints that go to a particular address. Let's see. Um, Yeah, if I do another one here. Yeah, these are not all not like the, the super, um, the best examples, uh, because here we could simply uh, query for to this address. But let's see. Let's say we have a we we also have a transfer function. Um, then we could filter, but that kind of makes a trick with uh, and or for more specific use cases. It's in that version. Oh, nice. Okay, Slim chest is in the house. Also make sure to see the, the, the topic request so we can have the next ones. Um, okay, let's try again if we can get there. So in, so in schema. And then, yeah, probably the CLI version. Mm -hmm. Okay, which which CLI version should I have? It's a pretty high one. Let's see what's the latest. So the uh, GitHub graph protocol graph tooling. And go in here packages CLI. See that package JSON. Yeah, zero fifty one two. Yeah, it's the latest. Um, try again. PNPM deploy local. No, actually, the error is on the graph node. See, we have it on the graph node. It's not yet deterministic. Maybe I need to enable non-deterministic features on the graph node. Okay. All right, let's find out how this works. Graph node. Uh. I would say that's probably somewhere in the docs, unless someone else knows exactly where it is. And our ah, environment variables. Here we go. Non. Yeah. Okay. 
Cool text. Graph hello. Declare all features. Okay. Do we need to define the features that we tried before? Um, and. I mean, one thing that that could be is that I tried to search a field that's defined as bytes and not a string. Let's see. Mm -hmm. So the transfer, I mean, to the hash, I need to 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 x three. So I need for that work, I need to do code chain again. Something that validates, this validates. Okay. Last try, other than that, I think we can wrap it up. Okay, I can't, like maybe I need to somehow enable this full text, but it seems it's not documented. Um, but where did you see that? Thirty-two fifty-five. Okay, thank you. Thirty. Uh huh. Okay. So maybe we should we should document this. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, so no, I need to go here. True. Speed run. Subcraft development. I hope this goes through. sometimes. Mm, why not change? Sometimes I need to rebuild the Docker file. Well, I'm not very. Do you think I need to clean first? Let's find out. Uh, quick start. Ooh.
I think that was it. No, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. Well done. Thanks, everybody. Um, yeah, don't forget to put in um, the request forms. We have these office hours weekly. It's at the same time, although as the core dev call. Um, so then we can just do the core dev. Thank you so much.